automated my job and it completely changed my life. When I started, I knew absolutely nothing about automation, but now it helps me save hundreds of hours a year and eliminate so much tedious and frustrating work. Today I'll share my story of going from a 12-year-old kid who knew nothing about computers to discovering automation a few years down the line, and then to automating my job, which gave me the time to start my own business and YouTube channel. By the end of this video, you'll understand why I think automation is one of the most valuable skills you can possibly learn, and how anyone can get started with it, even if you're not a technical person. My name's Mo, I make videos about automation on Mac, but let's go back to the beginning. So I got my first Mac when I was 12 years old. It was a cheap MacBook Air from school. And as soon as I got it, I just started to play around with it. You know, I would open all of the applications on it, try to figure out what they were and what they did. I would look at the keyboard shortcuts and try to learn those and just dig through all of the files on the system to learn as much as possible. Now, one of the apps that was on this Mac was iMovie. So the editing software iMovie, and I got into editing videos. So I was making these videos on my MacBook Air from school, and I ended up learning basically all of the features that it had to offer. So I would play around with all the different transitions, I would learn the different menu items and shortcuts, and I got to the point where I felt like I had mastered iMovie. Like I, There was nothing more for me to learn in this app. So then fast forward a couple of years, I was doing a lot of freelance editing in Premiere Pro, which is a more advanced editing software. Now I'd been using a lot of keyboard shortcuts by this point, and I thought I was pretty fast. You know, I would press keyboard shortcuts to cut up my footage or to apply effects. So I thought I was pretty fast at video editing actually. And then I came across this video editing tutorial on YouTube. It was by this guy, Taryn Von Hemert. It was a four hour long tutorial about Premiere Pro, this editing software. And this guy had six keyboards. So six keyboards all on his desk and every keyboard has its own keyboard shortcut. So, you know, the G key on keyboard number three might be a macro or automation that would import his footage, apply a bunch of effects to it, change the audio and do all of these things that would normally take a few minutes, but he just pressed a single keyboard shortcut and it was done. So this video, even though the, the tutorial itself was about editing and Premiere, the macros are what blew my mind. You know, I was completely taken by it and I knew I needed to start using macros and automations as fast as possible. So, you know, these macros, these keyboard shortcuts to do a sequence of keystrokes or clicking the mouse or opening apps that uh, no human could do at that speed. So, you know, here I was thinking I was pretty fast at video editing. And then I came across this tutorial and realized I was completely wrong. There was so much that I was missing out on that could make my work as a video editor 10 times more efficient. So this completely changed everything. This guy, Taron Von Hemer, had been on a Windows computer using this program called Auto Hotkey. So Auto Hotkey is like this uh, macro editor, but you had to know how to code to use it. Like you had to write out this scripting language to tell the computer to, you know, click at this coordinate point on the screen. It was way too complex. And the other problem was that I was on a Mac. So the program didn't even work on a Mac. So I searched for alternative programs on Mac. Like I just looked up how to make macros on Mac and I came across Keyboard Maestro, which is this macro editing software and automation software. And the cool thing about it was that you didn't need to know how to code at all. Like you could just drag and drop these actions into the editor, like an action to type a keystroke or to click the mouse at a certain place on the screen. And it could even record the actions that you did. So you could just press the record button and do a bunch of stuff like opening apps or files and then it would add all the actions for you. So I thought this was absolutely amazing. And I tried to recreate some of the macros that Taryn Von Hemer had been using. So I was trying to figure out how to use the, the actions in Keyboard Maestro and build some of these macros myself to save time while editing videos. But in the beginning, it was pretty tough. You know, I was super slow at using this app. I struggled a lot. I had no idea what I was doing. 
even the most basic macros took me often hours to create. I remember I was trying to make something. This was a macro to just zoom in on Google Docs, like to make the font bigger. And it literally took me a couple of hours to figure out the actions to use, to like click the drop down menu and change the font to something bigger. Um, but it was also really fun, even though I struggled a lot. I was enjoying this process of trying to figure out how to use the software and build these macros. And I started posting questions on the Keyboard Maestro forum. So there's a forum online where you can you know, post questions and there's experts that pretty much live on there, which is amazing. And they have so much knowledge and experience, which they give away for free. Um, so this was kind of how I, I started learning Keyboard Maestro, just asking questions, seeing what other people were doing on the forum, you know, learning from the macros that they were building and applying them to my own workflow to edit faster and, you know, start saving time even in other applications outside of Premiere Pro. So by this point, I was loving everything I was doing in Keyboard Maestro, learning about if conditions, like if this app is open, then do this set of actions like this, otherwise do another set of actions. And it turns out this is basically what programming is, like learning how to code is just using those same types of actions, except instead of dragging and dropping actions into a visual editor, like in Keyboard Maestro, you're just typing it out instead. So, you know, I was seeing on the Keyboard Maestro forum that people were using these scripts and other programs to make their macros more efficient and do more powerful things that Keyboard Maestro couldn't do by itself. So I was like, okay, I need to learn how to program to take my macros to the next level. So I had a friend who was a programmer at the time and I was like, okay, I, I wanna learn how to code, like what do I do? And he sent me a textbook about Java. So Java is a programming language and I had no idea what language to start with. So I'm like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Let me just learn Java. So that summer I did the nerdiest thing imaginable. I read a textbook about Java and taught myself how to code. Um, it was super fun. I loved it. But then I realized that um, actually Java isn't really useful for Keyboard Maestro. Like it's good for some things, but it's not really relevant to making macros as much as other languages like Python. So then I taught myself Python as well, which is great for automation. You know, it can control things on your computer. It's awesome for automation on Mac and you can interface it with Keyboard Maestro. So learning Python was a huge step up in my ability to automate different tasks in my work. And then I decided to get a degree in computer science. So I went to school for four years. I studied computer science, you know, thinking that this would, you know, level up my ability to automate. And I was even thinking about like going into a career in automation or something like that. So, um, you know, I was a little disappointed by my classes because they were very theoretical. I thought that I would go to college to learn more of these very practical skills because the thing I loved about automation and programming was that I could make a program in you know, a few minutes or a few hours and see the results immediately. I could see the program controlling my computer, saving me time that otherwise I would have needed to do manually. So that was what really attracted me to coding and programming in the first place. And then here I was in these classes, which were super theoretical, not applicable at all. And I just found it a little bit disappointing. And the other thing was, you know, I was there in class and some of these people were amazing programmers but they were using their mouse on the lowest sensitivity setting. So it was like the most excruciating thing, just watching them drag their mouse across the screen or do things that I knew there was a keyboard shortcut for that could save them 10 seconds if they just pressed the shortcut. Um, so I really felt like there was this disconnect between the, the things that attracted me to coding and programming in the first place and you know the, the things that they were doing compared to what I wanted to do. So, Despite these concerns, I decided to pursue a career in software engineering. Um, so during my time getting this degree, I did an internship one summer. It was with an organization doing some web development projects and they assigned me to this super repetitive task. So basically they were trying to upgrade this website. So there was an old version and they needed to transfer it to a new version, which involved literally copying and pasting every single paragraph from every single page on this website, and there were hundreds of pages, copying and pasting every single paragraph into this new database, 
and then copying each database entry and then formatting it with certain text. And, you know, they told me, okay, this is what you're going to be doing this summer for three months. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to do this manually. Um, you know, after seeing them do it after two tries, I was bored out of my mind. So, um, what I decided to do was automate it. So I had experience in Python and keyboard maestro by this point. So I spent a couple of weeks writing a script to completely automate this task. Like it would use web scraping to get the paragraphs from the old website and then insert them into the new database and then format them with all the correct text. And this ended up saving the organization hundreds of hours of labor, which was, you know, as shocking to me as it was to them. You know, I knew how powerful automation was, but to see it in action in such a concrete way really opened my eyes to the importance of automation. So this was a really great experience, actually. You know, I was able to apply these skills that I've been working on building and help out this organization to save, you know, tons of tedious labor. So fast forward a bit, I'm working as a software engineer at a healthcare company. And, you know, the first couple of weeks of the job, onboarding is always crazy, especially as a software engineer, since there's so many new systems and softwares that you have to learn how to use and how they all work together. So the first couple of weeks were pretty hectic. But then I started to get the hang of things, understand what my place was, what my role was in this project, how all the systems worked. And of course, like there was so much tedious labor involved in this, just like clicking to run these tests and do things to the database and all this stuff. And so again, my instinct is there's no way I'm doing this manually. So then I started writing these programs to automate my work. And it got to the point where I was only working two hours a day because everything else had been automated. And I told my boss, I'm like, you know, is there more work for me to do? I, I, I don't have anything to do right now since, um, you know, everything is just automated. And this was kind of incredible. He told me he didn't have more work for me. Um, so I had been working on this one project and other projects after that were kind of dependent on this one being completed. But it was due to factors outside of my control that I, I couldn't advance on the project anymore. So my boss was literally telling me, like, I don't have any work for you. Like, maybe you should just watch some courses, learn some new skills or whatever. And I was like, wow, like, this is kind of incredible. Like, I have six hours of free time in my day um, that I would otherwise be working. So side story around this time, I had been talking to a friend who had a successful business. And I thought back to a conversation we'd had a couple months before. Um, so, you know, we'd been on a walk and he told me to think about starting a business myself. Um, you know, he was basically saying like, you need to think about skills that you have, how can you provide those in a way that gives value to other people. And, um, you know, I had no idea what I could offer, but he suggested, you know, maybe you can do these automations, these macros that you do for yourself. Like, what if you could offer that to other people? And he was like, you know, you're saving so many hours a week. Like, why don't you make an offer to save someone a hundred hours a year or something like that. And I was thinking like, there's no way I can promise that. Like, I know I've done this for myself, but I, I don't know if I can do that for another person. Um, so I was kind of nervous about that idea. I didn't know if I could guarantee that, but my friend was like, you know, just start a YouTube channel, sort of this business model where you give away the secrets for free and then just sell the implementation. You know, you give 99% of people everything they need to learn automation on their own, but then for the 1% of people who want to move way faster, you can offer personalized coaching so that they can do that. So I was thinking about all these ideas my friends had been sharing. So then that's when I decided to start working on this YouTube channel. You know, I'm in this job working two hours a day. I have so much free time. And so I decided to just start making tutorials about Keyboard Maestro and sharing some of these things that I'd learned over the years about how to save time in my work or speed up certain repetitive tasks. And then I decided to start having calls with some of my viewers. So I had a call with a woman, Elizabeth, who was a doctor and helped her make some macros to speed up her workflow of like typing out diagnoses for different patients. Um, and then I worked with this guy, Aaron, uh, one of my early clients. And again, I was still nervous about this idea of promising to save someone, you know, a hundred hours a year or whatever. And 
I decided to just give a full refund guarantee. Like if I don't get you the results that I promise, I will give you a full refund. And for Aaron, this guy ended up working out really well. And the macros that we set up, he was working in sales, had to do a bunch of tedious tasks every day. It ended up saving him like four or 500 hours a year, which was just mind blowing to me. You know, I knew I could do those things for myself, but to see it work for another person was absolutely incredible. And then there was John, another doctor, helped him save, you know, eight, 10 hours a week. Um, and it just kept going from there. You know, Kira, who's a small business owner, Jonathan, who's saving now, you know, 15, 1800 hours a year. Like the results were <laughs> kind of as shocking to me as they were from other people. But with each of these people that I worked with, um, you know, I was gaining skills myself, improving my ability to automate. And just learning so much and having so much fun helping people with their unique problems in their work and seeing them eliminate so much of that tedium and frustration that comes from just clicking the mouse or typing out things in such a way that uh, just drains your energy and gives you that brain fog that makes you procrastinate on your work. So seeing how big of an effect automation has had on my own life and the lives of others really makes me believe that it's one of the most important skills that one can learn in this age of technology. I don't think most people realize how much of their work can be sped up, how many seconds and minutes are lost in every step of using a computer during the day. And when you add all of those up, it can come out to multiple hours a week. And when you gain that time back, you just have so much more freedom to you know, spend with your family, to reinvest into whatever work you're doing, or just to have that uh, you know, increased mental bandwidth that otherwise would be spent on tedious work. So I really hope that this video has been helpful and inspiring to help you advance on that automation journey of your own to save that time to claw back those minutes and hours and reduce the tedium and frustration that comes so naturally, unfortunately, with much of the work that we do in this digital age. So if you enjoyed this type of video, please leave a comment letting me know if you want to hear more about my story, go into more of the details that I skimmed over. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn much more about Keyboard Maestro, which is the automation software I use the most, you can watch my free six hour course on it right here. Thank you so much for watching.